I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Brooke Beckett, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Galt Joint Union High School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you. So you are the Technology and Engineering Teacher at Galt High School. Yes. Tell us all about that. I teach the technology classes at Galt High School. It's a newer program that we've recently started really focused in getting students ready for college or a career in a related industry. Especially now, technology is kind of integrated in every field, so it's a big thing if you're able to do things with technology, you can take it with you wherever else, even if technology is not your forte. So the word technology is a really broad category, but explain what you do for your students. We have a few different directions they can take with it. Everyone in our technology pathway will do an exploring computer science class where they get a little bit of everything and then whatever they're interested in they can take a second or a third year pursuing that. So there's, if they're more interested in some of the theory and how technology works, there's AP computer science principles that they can take where they do coding focused in Python, they do some websites, they learn a lot about bytes and bits and how the internet works and how everything is abstracted. So when you're using Microsoft Word, what all is actually behind that? You're so far from the zeros and ones. So they learn a lot more of the theory that they can take with them to help develop new stuff. Students can also go into IT, informational technology. So those students help our district IT team. Mm. They do some training through Cisco Networking Academy, learn some of their basis about the different hardware and software, and then they continue their training, but they're in a rotation where they either are training and developing their skills, or they are actually out with our technicians being the first ones on the scene when a printer is jammed on campus and that teacher's going, but I need to print this now, <laughs> or the overhead light bulb or not the light bulb, but the overhead projector isn't working or something, our students will be the first ones on the scene. So anything that they can fix, they will fix and they have their whole log so that someone else can follow what they're doing. So they really get that hands-on experience of being a technician. We also have our digital video production, so very similar to the sets here. Students can learn being a camera operator, being the studio technician, being the talent and being on camera. So they get a lot of different aspects of that and going out in the field and getting footage from different events on campus. And we have the yearbook program, which is a little bit more of a graphic design spin. So students are working kind of in the journalism sense, but then also making it look really amazing on paper and adding graphics and their layout and design to it. But what a valuable experience to be able to go out with a tech support person and, and kind of it's almost like an internship mm -hmm. when you think about that it. That was the goal. Yeah. They must well, be really excited to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then our kind of capstone is they do all those classes or whichever ones they're interested in and then they can apply as a class. They apply to be a manager of that section. So I have a student or a few students who run the different IT part. I have one who runs our GTV, our digital video production. So that's kind of okay, you've built your skills, now are you ready to have people working under you where you are gonna be the epitome of being organized and motivating others? Mm -hmm. Feel what it's like to be a manager, because oftentimes if you're really good at what you do, you're gonna be asked to move up and you kind of get a feel for what it's like or if you like being the one doing everything. And explain and so the engineering on. part of what you're teaching as well. I have one engineering class. At Galt High School, we have something called Best Academy for Biomedical Engineering, Science, and Technology. And initially, I was brought into that academy to teach some engineering classes. I was a physics teacher. Engineering kind of fit with that. One of our engineering classes has a lot of physics in it. So I was brought in to teach that class. I loved teaching the elective. I loved the hands-on projects and being able to make it really realistic for the students. So I teach a class that's a survey of different types of engineering through Project Lead the Way called Principles of Engineering. It's a lot of fun. A couple years ago we built nest boxes for Sacramento Zoo oh. or students learn about different like hydraulics and pneumatics and they get to build their little syringe bots that pick things up and move them. 
they do a little bit of programming so they learn how to make like a prototype of a small elevator with all the call buttons or a prototype of a keyboard that makes the tone sounds. Mm. So fun little things where they get to take what they learn a little bit farther. Make it practical. Mm -hmm. And there's been a real emphasis the last several years on uh, you know, STEM, uh, technology and engineering. Uh, that must, uh, you must see the excitement of the kids when they get to do all those hands-on things and knowing that you know, what they're working on is something that they could possibly apply to a, to a career or in college. I think it's really important to have it because they see the value in what they're doing in English because they're writing in their yearbook or they're doing stuff in their math class and then they get to see it even more applied in their engineering class. So it really helps strengthen what they're doing in other classes and they get to see how it might be used in a career later on instead of just learning because my teacher said to learn it. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been teaching technology? We've gradually been phasing it in, probably four, five years, somewhere in there. And even in that short span of time, it, it, technology has probably changed exponentially for you. How do you keep up? Keep Professional going development? To, yeah, yeah, keep going to trainings, stay in touch with other teachers who teach similar things. One of my role models is Mark Emery from Granite Bay High School, has a very similar technology program. So I definitely email him and go visit his school and see what he has and how he has it set up. As a teacher, is that maybe your biggest challenge, is just keeping up with all the changes? Or one, maybe one of your challenges? Yeah, it's one of the challenges, but yeah. it's a fun one to be able to see what's some of the latest and greatest, and even to take some of the latest and greatest things that students see in technology and use it in a different way. Like one time, you know, Snapchat is huge, so we used Snapchat to film our anchors for our program just to add something that our audience can relate to, but using it in a professional way, and it was highly entertaining to see some of those Snapchat filters on the anchors, <laughs> yeah. and especially near Halloween, so it's good times to use it in a different way. And technology is such a big part of, of a student's life now, and so while a lot of it is kind of, you know, ubiquitous, kind of already there, at the same time, it, it's also uh, it's prominent, it's like it's in the background because it's constant, but it's also out in the forefront. So it's, it's really big for them. So when you see the student really get engaged, uh, that must excite you as a teacher. Yeah, and most of the students that come my way have some sort of interest in it, whether they love taking selfies of themselves or they are a gamer, and then they usually find something else that they're also interested in. But one thing about this generation Everyone says, oh, they're the tech generation. They all know how to do everything. But really, phones, for example, are just so intuitive. If you didn't learn how to use a mouse and use the scroll bar, if you grew up just um, flipping the page up and down, it's very intuitive compared to if you learned it another way and now you're trying to do that, it's just not second nature to you. So the students don't really know how to do more advanced things with their phones. They just know some of the basics. So I love teaching them other things they can do with their phone. Like even in engineering, students were trying to get something level. I said, you know, there's apps that are levels. They're like, what? Yeah, and then you can just mm -hmm. set it there and see if mm -hmm. your project's level right. with a tool you already had in your pocket. And I love being able to do things like that. And they probably teach you some things every once in a while, Definitely. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> For better or worse, <laughs> but yeah. So what does it mean for you to be a Teacher of the Year? I think it would bring some spotlight to Galt. We're such a small little town on the edge of the county. I think it would be a really good thing to hear some of the things that are going on down there. I was surprised initially when I got Teacher of the Year for our district because I'm a bit more humble. I don't go seeking the spotlight. Even being here with you guys right now is so weird to be on this side of the camera instead of on the behind right. the scenes side. But I think it's been really fun so far to talk to other people about the teaching profession and where it's going and what's happening for our students. Well, it's been great speaking with you. We Thank appreciate you. your time. We've been speaking with Brooke Beckett who is the Teacher of the Year for the Galt Joint Union High School District. Congratulations and thanks for being with us. Thank you.